Well hello everybody this is Sean back with another video for my channel 300 baud and today we're going to be taking a look at not one but two Atari Jaguars in my collection. The first one here you can see I paid all of $29 for and the second one I purchased for about $60. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and get on into the video. So I bought this machine probably around 1997. I got it from KB Toys and I paid all of $29 for this machine. Um, this one's in nice condition. Um, I actually have another Jaguar that I'll show you here in a moment. Uh, this one I bought because I was, uh, I call it the bank job, but at the time I was working for a company that was swapping out, I think it was a First of America Banks, got bought out by National City. So I'd go in and uh, change all the computers and get them ready, and then the next business day, they were a National City. So, um, and at the time, I was with a buddy that I uh, was working with, and um, I wanted to, uh, I was just talking about the Jaguar. I saw them at KB Toys. They were marked down from uh, 40 bucks down to 30 bucks, and I bought a Jaguar, and my buddy bought a Gamecom. Um, I got the Jaguar, it was bundled with Cybermorph, and that's all I got. Um, and uh, my buddy got the Gamecom, and he bought uh, Gamecom, and he bought the uh, uh, Doom on that. And uh, both being pretty horrendous game systems, but we had a lot of fun with them. So this system here, um, we'll do a quick uh, kind of unboxing here. Uh, but before I do that, let's take a look at the box itself. So as you can see, the, uh, the Jaguar box is probably one of the coolest boxes you'll ever see on a video game console. I've got a lot of light glare here, but uh, but just a very cool box with the Jaguar and the Panther claw marks and the eyes looking at you. And of course, this is a 64-bit system. Um, in reality, it's more of a 64-bit bus, um, not so much a 64-bit processor, because I believe it has like, it's a 16-bit bus on the Motorola 68000, which has an internal 32-bit code, but then there's also the Tom and Jerry chips. Uh, uh, one of the chips, I believe the graphics processor, ha addresses a 64-bit um, memory space, and uh, but they're they're kind of 32-bit systems, but but it has all of that. So it's it's uh, you know for all intents and purposes, we'll give Atari credit and say it's a 64-bit system. Now a couple of things that are kind of unique to this is uh, it's Atari made in the USA. I believe um, Atari had contracted IBM to manufacture the boards. Um, you can see this one comes with Cybermorph, and there's the original KB Toy Stores uh, marked down from 40 bucks to 29. Um, you see on the bottom, not much here. It's an interactive multimedia system. Let's take a look at the sides over here. So on the side, got a little bit more detail. Um, it's got a 64-bit graphics chip. It's a RISC processor, 16.8 uh, million colors, super realistic video motion, CD quality sound, 16-bit digital system, 3D graphics, fast realistic animation, High speed rendering, faster, faster than 85, 850 million pixels per second. Digital interface port capable of supporting merging digital standards, made in the USA. And the package includes the Atari 64-bit interactive multimedia system, sleek and responsive Jaguar controllers, AC power adapter, and video cable. The first for your Atari Jaguar. Now it says video cable. Now does that video cable is that the RF? Or is that uh, composite? I believe it, all of them came with RF, um, but I'm not exactly sure because I actually have both. Uh, on the back here, we've got a nice image of the Jaguar. It's a little dusty. I've had it sitting around for a long time. Talks about the 64-bit system uh, and then uh, source for endless entertainment. Uh, it has an expanding library of new and exciting software. Takes full advantage of the Atari Jaguar's powerful 64-bit technology, which I'd have to say that was the problem with the Jaguar, is the software actually did not take advantage of the powerful 64-bit technology on the Jaguar. A um, lot of YouTubers, they get these things and they play them and they're like, it looks like a 16-bit system. <laughs> you know, so, which unfortunately, that's the case. Um, one thing that does impress me with the Jaguar is its color. It actually has really nice color. 
um, which you see in like Tempest 2000 has like all kinds of flashy stuff going on. Um, let's see here, it's got a 64-bit graphics chip with multiple wrist processors. That's interesting. Uh, as far as I know, it's just Tom and Jerry. Uh, Motorola 68000 is not a uh, uh, wrist processor. Um, it has the 16.8 million colors, CD quality sound, 3D graphics. The 3D graphics on the Jaguar are, it can do it, but it's not very good at it. It doesn't have, uh, you know, a good um, uh, texture mapping or anything like that. Mostly it's just uh, shaded uh, polygons, so it doesn't look so good. Um, high speed rendering, 850 million pixels per second. Uh, digital interface ports. Um, I think that's just on the back is what they're talking about. There's like an expansion port. Um, some of the games they've got here, uh, they show on the Jaguar CD. Um, Troy Aikman's Football. I have never played that. It's got Alien vs. Predator. I've never played that. Um, I guess it's good. Um, it kind of looks boring to me. Uh, Arena Football. I've never played that. Um, Battle Wheels. I've never played with that. Tempest 2000. I definitely played that. Checkered uh, Flag. Kits Kasumi Ninja which I thought was a terrible game, um, and Doom, which is a good game, and Club Drive. I don't remember that one. I can't remember if I played with that one or not. Um, let's see here. What else we got? On this side, oh boy. So it's got some important. Read the box before opening. Um, talks about terms and conditions and licensing. Ugh. Yeah, okay. I may not back up copies of the product. Okay. I'm not supposed to back make backups. So, yeah. Anyhow, lots of uh, legal ease, which is kind of surprising uh, for the Jaguar at the time. Now, um, what is interesting about the Jaguar, and I remember seeing a headline at one point, is that when Atari released the Jaguar, it caught a lot of attention. As a matter of fact, the stock market, the uh, Atari shares, like closed with some kind of record because they went from a very low amount to a very high amount. There's a lot of anticipation with the Jaguar release. Um, so Atari shares went way up, um, and they they were you know pretty excited about it. Obviously that changed later, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look in the inside of this box and take a look at a Jaguar that hasn't been molested all that bad. And I think I want to open it from uh, this side over here. So let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. So here's a Jaguar as it would come packaged. Pretty close anyhow. Um, you can see I've got the, uh, the booklets in here. This is the uh, Jaguar user's guide. And uh, several, let's see how many pages we got in here. Looks like about 10 pages. Um, this one comes with the RF switch box, AC adapter, cartridge, and uh, let's see, connecting a TV, uh, connecting with the VCR, uh, twin lead terminal. All right, so a lot of stuff going on there. So in the back, we've got our AC adapter, our DSP port, the AV port, our channel selector, and the television port. Now, it is surprising to me that uh, Atari put an RF output on the Jaguar because by this time TVs you know they pretty much all had composite inputs um, a lot of them had S video input so it would have been nice if they would have done S video and composite or in a minimum just composite and just skip the RF output um, although I believe it has a pretty good picture with RF when you're using a standard television um, I'm not going to do it in this video but probably have a follow-up we'll do some comparisons with different uh, video options um, here we've got instructions on how to hook up your Jaguar with a VCR. Um, this is a good way to hook up um, any of the old computers. You can do your RF input or your switch box into the VCR and then your VCR can do your composite output, which is a pretty decent way of getting a picture out of things like old Ataris. And um, with the Jaguar though, it's best to go ahead and get the a better video output solution than the RF. And here we go, some more RF. So this is a very boring manual. So basically it's just talking about how to hook up your RF cable. Oh, here we go. Um, I've skipped forward a couple of um, pages. Um, let the games begin. Um, here we go, we've got optional equipment. So we've got an S-video cable. Unfortunately, I don't have an S-video cable, but I do have the composite video cable. I don't remember buying this, but I did, and I've got that. 
Um, here's an adapter you can get to hook up your RF, which you really don't need. Um, and there's some uh, troubleshooting. Um, and we've got a warranty here. Um, it's got a 90 day warranty. Um, and that's it for the manual. Here I've got the um, registration card. Uh, looks like I can register and get some free games, cartridges, and special prizes. That would be kind of cool. Wonder what happened if I sent this. Um, here we've got the manual for Cybermorph. Um, Cybermorph is in really not much of a game because I believe it was actually developed to be a technology demonstrator. Um, and it happened to be just good enough to package in as a game. Um, it's okay. Um, but, uh, you know, it just kind of shows it off. If they wouldn't have had it, uh, that lady, the green lady that pops up and says, where'd you learn how to drive over and over again? Probably would be a better game or at least have her say it once or twice and then just not say it anymore. <laughs> just, but it would have been better. Um, this is kind of a cool little manual. This is a uh, Jaguar. So it looks like they got a whole bunch of uh, paraphernalia that you can purchase. It's, uh, he's got a dollar fifty on it. So when you buy a Jaguar for $30, you get a bonus of a uh, catalog worth $1.50. Um, so we've got ourselves a Jaguar baseball cap, Jaguar t-shirt, we've got a uh, hoodie, um, I just have some more Jaguar clothes over here, um, yeah, it looks like our catalog, we can order stuff, um, got, got a lapel pen, now that, that would actually be kind of cool to have, lapel pen, and, uh, oh, we've got a, a waste pack, boy, that, uh, that'll impress all of your friends. And a, and a fanny pack for a Jaguar, and looks like a keychain fob, another keychain fob. Now this one's probably pretty cool, because this is probably a holographic one. Um, says says down here, awesome, acrylic key, key tag, shows it all. Jaguar logo printed in one side with a 3D laser Jaguar hologram on the opposite side. So yeah, that would be kind of a cool thing to have. Water bottles, before water bottles became the thing. Um, what is this? Um, sports bottle, pens, I have no idea, what is this? Which one is this? Sports bottle, bike bottle, eh, can't tell, looks like a laptop case, but anyhow. Got some Jaguar pens, oh, just a storage case, you can like bring your Jaguar on the go, I guess. And some coffee mugs, this would be kind of cool to have, that would be a cool thing to have. Um, and we've got a Jaguar watch on the back and some nifty glasses. That's the manuals that it came with. Now, inside we've got the Jaguar uh, wrapped up with the plastic it came with. I've got a controller here. Um, I've also got the Cybermorph packaged uh, here, uh, uh, cartridge. We're gonna leave this system alone. I have played with this before, um, but I'm just gonna leave this alone because you'll see in a moment uh, why I have this one packaged up nice and I've got a player system. So let me go ahead and put this back and we'll dive into the player system. So this is my uh, first Atari Jaguar I bought and this one has a little bit of an interesting story behind it. Or the, you can see the box suffered a little bit of damage unfortunately, but uh, it's exactly the same as my uh, nicer system, um, except the box is pretty rough and I, I played with this one. This one, this is one that uh, I got quite a few hours of enjoyment out of. Um, which is kind of hard to do with a Jaguar because some of the games are so bad. Now, you will see that uh, I don't have the bags in this one, um, and the box is uh, pretty much fallen apart. Um, so, um, I do have the optional um, composite uh, video connector for this one, which is very nice. Um, and uh, here's the power supply, and this is pretty chunky unit. It's it's heavy and this the weight of this power supply um, broke this apart. Um, so and then here's my uh, uh, controller for the Jaguar. Pull this one out and here we've got um, this says it's approved or it says made from recycled paper. Okay cool. Um, here we've got the uh, the business card or the warranty card I could send in. Um, this is interesting. I don't know if this one came with this one or not. This is interesting. I don't know if this came with it or not. We've got something about the Crutchfield catalog. 
I don't think it came in this box. But here we've got <clears throat> I, how I actually ordered it. So you can see I got the Atari Jaguar number 12 with game. Um, this came from Tiger Direct. Um, it came, I also ordered the Game Pack 1, which had Iron Soldier. Now, I don't remember actually getting that one. Huh. So maybe I didn't get Iron Soldier. I thought I ordered it. I, well, I don't know. But it says Iron Soldier with Flip Out and Tempest. I definitely got Flip Out and Tempest. Um, White Men Can't Jump. That was a terrible game. And Doom, which was good. And Game Pack number 4, which had Defender 2000, which is okay. And Super Burnout, which I believe... I didn't like that game. I don't think I still have it. We'll take a look at the games I've got still. So this was processed, looks like in March of 97 is when I ordered this. So uh, Tiger Direct was basically, um, they bought bought out a bunch of Atari stock, or excuse me, they're, they're, you know, emptied some of their warehouses, closed, they, they were just clearing them out. So the Jaguar, um, actually I paid quite a bit for this one. I, I paid $59.99 for the Jag system. So this one was more expensive. Um, and I paid uh, 30 bucks for each of these game packs. And each game pack was like two or a couple of games. I, I don't remember exactly. Um, I was pretty excited to get this system. Um, I ordered this. I was living in England at the time. Um, and, um, you know, they, they weren't really that available there at the, at the time. So I was pretty excited to get it. Here's my Jaguar manual, which is exactly the same as the previous system. And here is my... Um, the uh, Jaguar catalog. So it's pretty much the same. And here's the Jaguar itself. It's a very nice console um, as far as... So the Jaguar, this is a little bit dirty, um, uh, but it's got a nice heft to it. It's a very nice design. Um, your cartridges plug in the back. Um, there's uh, joysticks in the front. Uh, nothing on the side. Um, in the back, you've got your, uh, D I think they call it a DSP connector, your power, your uh, video, your AV out, your channel selector, and your RF out. Um, that's it for the Jag itself. Looking at this, this sure does look like a PCI connector. I'm not sure, but I think it might be the same or very, very close to it. Um, we've got the uh, controllers. Uh, a lot of people say awful things about these. I happen to like this controller. Now, the D-pad is a little mushy, uh, but I like the size of it because I have fairly uh, large hands and it just, it fits good. So I like that. I happen to like these keypads. This is very Atari 52-like or in television or ColecoVision, kind of a throwback to the mid 80s with three buttons. Uh, no shoulder pad, uh, shoulder buttons, so that's kind of a big miss. Um, but um, they did offer an enhanced controller that had three extra fire action buttons and, and had the uh, shoulder buttons. But I don't have that. So taking a look at some of the games I got. These are the games, uh, most of them I purchased with the system. Um, and I kept the ones I liked and I sold the ones I didn't like. So, so I've got Doom. This is a very good version of Doom for the Jaguar. I've got Flip Out. This is one of the weirdest video games I've ever played. I still really don't know what you're supposed to do. Maybe one of these days I'll read the instructions and play it. But uh, this is actually kind of cool just because it's so different. This is a game that I purchased um, in England at a, looks, looks like a, Software Plus, so it was a small computer store. Um, they had a very, very small Jaguar selection. I think this was a used game when I got it because it's pretty beat up and I'm usually pretty good to my stuff. Um, I don't think I paid $15 for this. I might have. Um, looks like it was marked down from $35 to $14.99. Basically, they were just getting out of the Jaguar. This is a good game. This is definitely um, worth owning. Uh, Tempest 2000. This is a great game. Um, this one I purchased with the Jaguar. Um, Missile Command 3D. This is okay. It's kind of an interesting take on Missile Command. Um, maybe shows off the 3D capability a little bit. And temp, uh, Defender 2000. Again, another take on Defender. Um, not not great, but not, not terrible at the same time. So, worth owning. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see here. This, oh, this one here. Oh my gosh. 
Uh, Mutant Penguins, this is a weird, weird game. I don't know how, to, what the heck you're supposed to do in this game. I know this big purple guy, he gets really angry at you and starts throwing stuff around the screen. It is just bizarre. Uh, so that's the game selections I've got. And recently I purchased a couple of additional Atari controllers um, on eBay. And I bought these, actually I bought these a year ago. So they're in new condition. And I got these from, I think it was Atari Sales and Service is the name of it. Um, but um, these I got both uh, cartridges with tax and shipping and everything for $54. Um, shipping was ridiculous at $16.10. Uh, probably didn't really cost that much to ship them, but, but hey, you know, I've got the extra controllers. Um, so nothing all that special, but that's, um, that is my Jaguar collection. I think what we'll do now is I'll plug this thing in and see if it still works because it has been many, many years since I've run this Jaguar. Is it going to be like your old Atari 2600 and trustworthy and just work? Or is this going to be more like, say, my Coleco Atom and not work? Let's find out. We interrupt this video. Sean just keeps rambling on and on about his Atari Jaguar. But don't worry, as part two is in the works. Don't miss exciting content such as reboxing, cleaning, and possibly gameplay. Until then, cheerio.